Welcome back, YouTube. Now, first of all, I apologise if you're picking up any extraneous external noise because it's still freezing cold in the garage. There's a small fan heater going on in the background, which you probably won't hear. But what you may certainly hear is it's blowing a gale outside and absolutely pouring down. So. You might pick up the door rattling and the rain pummeling up the roof. Apologies if you do. Um, not a lot I can do about it really. That's down to Mother Nature. Anyway, the engine, as you know, is on the bench. I still haven't got my extractor because I can't be bothered going into the workshop in gale force winds and pouring rain. So, this is where we are with the bike at the minute now. The, the frame still got the rear wheel and things in it so today I think we'll pop the wheel out, take the shock absorbers off, take the front end off, horn, any other remaining bits and pieces, swinging arm probably and then everything will be disassembled apart from the bottom end of the engine and we can start deciding what we're going to do about repainting it. Uh, at the minute I don't think it's going back in black. I have a odd craving for Dove Grey, which although was very unpopular at the time, I think looks really quite different now. So anyway, we shall see. So first up, it's going to be back wheel out, shock absorbers off, and then I'll tip the frame back and drop the front end out. So let's have a look at the back wheel. Nothing particularly special about getting the back wheel out. You've got nut on this end, hole for a Tommy bar on the other end, brake stay, adjusters at the back, speedo drive in the middle here. That's it really, can't see anything else. So I'll just loosen the spindle first and then we'll get the brake torque arm off. Is that turning Tommy Bar yet? No, good. Again, lots of bending down. Okay, so nothing's moving there, so we'll give that a little tap. Just to make sure it's loose. Which it is. Lovely jubbly. Right, okay. I'll take the torque arm off and knock the spindle out completely. Right, on this side we obviously have our brake drum, sprocket, that's our spindle with where the Tommy Bar hole is, chain adjuster, and this is the torque arm I'm going to take off now. Hopefully it'll pull out. If not, I'll often do it at the other end of the frame, but we'll get this end off first and have a look. Oops. Not that tight. Good, that's it out of the way. Don't have to worry about that until the wheel's out. Okay, so it's more bang now to get the wheel spindle out. I won't bore you with that. Right, tap the spindle through. It did try and catch on that adjuster briefly, but it's through. So, if we take the weight off, that should come out. And the wheel should roll back. Which it does. So, we'll rescue the adjusters. Pair off and the end caps, which go on the end of the frame. They can go together. And then we have the... Oh, I'll show you this. Can you see that? Let me put it there. You should better see it there. Speedo drive. Hmm. Okay, not sure how that's attached. Maybe it's... Uh, Manual time, I assume that would just 
pull off as previous ones I've owned have done. But anyway, I shall look that up. It may be held internally. Bolt on sprocket. So, shall we have a look at the drum? Being 71, probably got asbestos, so I'm just going to take a quick look, put it back together until I get some brake cleaner. There's your. Plenty of meat on them, that's for sure. The drum itself isn't that bad. It's not uncommon to have light rusting like this, and this is very light. So I'm sure that will clean up. We've got a bearing retaining ring that's never been off because the little holes, to, even using the correct tool, those little holes to form really easily. I would imagine the bearings are shot. But we shall see when we disassemble it properly. So bear with me while I put all this away, bag up the spindle and parts, then we'll come back and take the shocks off. Right, the shocks, which are in dove grey, on this side, are ready to just pop out because of, that came off to remove the grab rail and rear mud guard, and the bottom one came off, I think, from memory because of the chain guard. Either way, so just to tap out, nice and easy. Well, I say nice and easy, should be nice and easy. There we go. Rubber bushies. The bottom one's had it. Top one looks remarkably good, really. Yeah, that's not bad, Nick. So definitely going to need bottom bushies. I will be removing the spring and checking the damping. The chrome on the spring is very good. Yep. And then the other one, I've got to undo the bottom nut and do the same. So. Again, there's not much point you watching that it's, uh, straightforward nut and bolt job. Swinging on next. I've loosened the nut on this side. I'm just going to try and spin this, which will give me an idea whether everything is seized up. Assuming this turns, I'll make an attempt to knock it through this way. Uh, the little rubber sleeves are still there. And there are some bits of ratchet scattered about here, which is very unpleasant, I hadn't realised. So it's obviously been stored somewhere where our little uh, rodent friends have had access. Anyway, let's see if this will move. Not on the other side, has it? Yes, lovely, jubbly. So, everything's turning, and it's not seized. Excellent. Right, I'm now going to give this side a few taps and put the nut at the end of the threads to protect the threads. I'm going to try and get this moving. So, fingers crossed, it'll all come out nice and easy. Because often, we struggle with these, well, swinging arms in general, I mean. Excellent. Right, I'll remove the nut and then get a suitable drift. Just to tap it through, but it's moving quite well. I'm very, very happy. So, not much washer on that side. Right, bear with me a second while I go and get a drift. Back again. Mm. That 
it's got a lot tighter. Let's try it again. Oh yeah, tighten up a bit there. I think we should add a little lubrication and tap it back. Screw it some in here. Put a little bit on there. And we'll lock it back in. Stop again. A bit more lube. Getting easier every time. This is what we want. Coming out further every time. Yeah, there we go. Yes, success. Right, you see where it was picking up in the middle of the frame. The outside bush area is clean on both sides and the centre section is rusty. Uh, when we wash it, we'll find out if it's reusable. So now in theory, the swinging arm should pull out, in theory. In reality, I think I need to get rid of that spacer. It won't do anything. You see that coming out? I probably should have put it on the other side. We're going down. Right, space it out. Now, hopefully, it should uh, come out. But no. Is that another bigger space on this side? Is it? It is. I really should learn to look the manual. Life would be so much easier. Or even the parts of it. Yeah. Right.
Right. So thicker, thicker spacer on the UK near side. Thinner spacer on this side. Right, finally. Yay! There we go. And then we've got two rubber sleeves which are not broken, just a bit old. But anyway, there's no point in me witching on. They will all have to be cleaned and inspected. So I shall turn you off, package everything up, and then we'll take the front end out. Okay, if the swinging arm out of the way, I've tilted the frame back. I've got a trolley jack resting on the back of it to keep it weighted down. And now I'm going to move on to taking the forks out, which is why I've adopted this rather peculiar angle, because it does make access a little bit easier, my life a little bit easier, especially once the front wheel's out, which is what we're going to do next. Now, I'll take you around to the brake side. Well, I'll just have a quick chat about something before I whip the wheel out. Right, as I mentioned before, I'm unfamiliar with BSAs, although I believe these are also fitted to Triumphs of the period. I'll have to check, but I think they were. So I've never actually looked at one of these brakes close up. Now, what worried me about them, as far as ability went, was that you're relying on the outer cable to push this in as the inner cable pulls that one. Whereas the previous twin leading shoe brake had a single cable and then a, a firm metal linkage between the two. I've no idea whether these are uh, better on the road because I've written one. But what I can't work out in a minute, and again it's probably down to my eyesight, is how to get this cable off. I it will be easier when I've got it on the bench and I can actually turn it around and look at it properly because I can't see that much. It appears that my cable outer here is stuck in this ferrule, which is stopping me getting the leverage to pull things about. Having said that, a quick look and I can't see how it's meant to go together anyway. So I'll look at that when I get the wheel off. Now the wheel I haven't drained the forks by these little drain plugs because I'm going to put new seals in anyway because the ones that are in there are probably probably well off by now given they're rubber. So what I intend doing is removing the four nuts at the bottom of each fork leg, the brake stay, get the wheel out, have a look at the back of this at a later date. I'll have a quick look at the shoes now to show you what they're like but I'll be looking at that in more detail later and then fork tops off, yoke, etc, etc, etc. So I'm going to undo these and drop the wheel out and that of course. So I'll bring you back when the wheel's ready to come out because it is just undoing four nuts on each side. Right, all the nuts are undone apart from this one. So I thought I'd just bring you back for the uh, final removal. Slightly awkward to get out of this nut because it's, it's in the way very slightly. So with all four nuts off and all the relevant washers off, in theory this little cap should come down the up and a bit sticky and the wheel should slide out. So, Whoa! There you go. Slide isn't a word for it. Okay, we're out. Mudguard next. I think I mentioned in an earlier video that all these rubber inserts are rotted away, which they have. Just coming up in chunks. So four bolts. And the front mudguards off. Which I've just noticed. Bring you up.
I've just noticed the first time it's split. It's irritating. I don't think it's going to do with that. Uh, obviously, could weld it to painted silver because again. would rather keep the original mudguard, if at all possible. Yeah, you can get reproduction to these, so it's not the end of the world. However, whilst we're on that topic, I cleaned up the back mudguard, which you saw in the previous video. It's come up reasonably well. Um, obviously, it has tiny marks. One slightly larger mark underneath where the real light fitting sits, but I'm not bothered about that. And sadly, some acid staining where the battery must have uh, overcharged and dumped some out through the overflow pipe. Anyway, I then briefly considered getting a replacement. So I looked up the prices, and at the minute, the only ones available I can find cost £240. So for the sake of a few minor imperfections, I'll be keeping it. So I'll check how much one of these is, and if it's a lot of money, I will be repairing that. Otherwise, like lots of restorations, this could turn into a huge money pit. And, uh, I'm not willing to go down that route. Anyway, we're going to take the bolts out and remove the mudguard. Mudguard off. I just thought I'd show you what I mean about the rubber bushes. The mudguard is held bolted to the forks, plate either side, they split off, leaving you your rubber bushes, which then just unpeel. Those two are not too bad. Well, they're not good, but you know, they're not absolutely everything. That one is uh, rather worse, shall we say. This is the one down the bottom. Which uh, seems to weld itself together for a minute. Oh, there we go. There we go. So, a set of those required without a shadow of a doubt. Okay. Now then, the other thing, which I will show you, Let me just see if you can see that. No, you probably can't. Swing you around. This is our broken guard stay. Here, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? It's been welded previously. So, I don't have to worry too much, because it's already been done. So I will just weld it out of the stay. I'll probably uh, touch that in with a bit of silver paint. Just to give it a bit of weather, weather protection. So that's going to need repair, unless they are very cheap to buy. I shall have to see. Anyway, we shall now move on to the forklift removal. Right, pretty standard stuff on the fork legs really. Got through bolts for the bottom yoke. There's nothing on the top. So it'll be undo the big nuts. Presumably there'll be a slight taper on the forks at the top. We shall try tapping them down to find out. So the first job is to get these undone, making sure they're very loose, and they will move up top. So I'll go and find the right size spanner for that. You know, Plus, I haven't got a deep socket. Yes, there we go. I'm spinning already, so I'll go and get a spanner to hold them. 916. Rummage, rummage, rummage. We 
switch out of the socket. There and then. They are really loose, all that is, anyway. Right, I don't actually have the right size spanner for these because they're very large. This chrome ring is going to get changed anyway, in fact probably both are, but this one definitely is. So just bend that out of the way for the minute because of no importance. Oh, not that tight. So, I'll just back it off a couple of threads. So you see that's now loose. And then I'm going to tap that with a soft hammer to try and encourage the forks to move. And if you don't want to, we'll have to split the yoke and see what happens then. But the starches, we'll see if we get any movement. Nope. Not a bean. Right, okay. Um, we'll try the other one. And see if we get any joy with that one. And then, if not, we shall have to try and spread these... Uh, Spread the bottom yoke. At least they weren't tight. Okay, just a couple of threads, just so it's still well supported, but there's a bit of movement to try and encourage things to start. Nope. Okay. Wishful thinking on my part, I'll have to spread the yolks. I'll bring you back when I found something to do it with, and also the battery's dying, so I need to change over anyway. Okay, welcome back. Battery's changed, and I also went and got a knackered old screwdriver with a fat blade, which is spreading the gap in the yolks very slightly. So, I have given it an exploratory tap, and I think we're going places. So, let's see if we can carry any more movement. Come on. Yes, we have a small gap appearing. Excellent. Tap that in a bit more. We now have a good five milli. I'm surprised it's still so tight. Oh, getting really easy now. Right, we're well on the way. It's just. Tapping down very easily. Yes, there we go, another couple will do that. Right, the stench is turning. They're a little tight, normally, well, when I say normally, I haven't got that much experience in them, but the Bonneville pulled down easier than this. We must have a good 11, 10, 11 milli drop now. I said the Bonneville just fell out by this time. This one clearly doesn't want to. No, not left at this rate. No thread, I should say. 
Oh. Right. Okay, what happened? That's it coming out. Didn't want to out just yet. Oh well, too late. Okay, threads out. Just nothing, there's nothing holding on to it at all, it's virtually out. Okay, there's your top nut washer, instrument holder. This should have come out by now. Come on, you little tinker. There we go. There we go. Lovely. Lovely jubbly. One fork leg. Which we shall lean against there. I'll drain the oil out of them. And I come to strip them, which will be in a later video. Right, so I'll take this other one out and uh, which is exactly the same procedure and then bring you back to sort out getting the yolks off. Anyway, so the next thing is to uh, get the top yolk and bottom yolk separated. There should be uh, taper rollers in here. So I'm just going to get rid of this, undo this, that should tap off, the bottom should slide out, and we can have a look at what's going on. That's the, uh, that's the theory. Who knows? Get in the practice. Keep it the same. Right, so that's that out. So now we need a socket to fit that top nut. Do we have one? Do you know we don't? Okay, so I'm going to have a look and find one. Right, can't find anything big enough in Imperial. Um, I have got 30 milli, which uh, is close enough, I think. Right, apologies for this, I'm having to re-record this section because uh, for some reason it didn't come out the first time and I don't know why. So, with the top yoke off, you'll see a dust shield, for want of a better word, under which lie your taper roller bearing. So that would normally be sitting higher because the race has already gone at this point. Apologies for that, but anyway, when you remove the... Uh, Remove the bottom yoke. There's your topa roller. Bit of a mess. Bottom one even worse. Don't matter about the stem, that's not important. Where the bearing sits is clean still, and I'm sure it will be under here. We will remove that shortly. So there you are, that's what you will find. So they need to be changed. And then Inside here and at the bottom will be your races, which is the next section where you'll see me knocking them out with the drift. Why that part of the video disappeared, I do not know, but it certainly did. Anyway, under each race, top and bottom, there are these rings. You can see the markings on the ring, that's the bottom one, from where I was chiseling down, drifting down, to knock the, uh, the races out. Okay, sorry about that, why the camera didn't record that section, I really don't know, but there you are. At least I've come back to explain it so there isn't just a huge gap in the, uh, the video. Right, the frame's upside down now. I'm going to have a crack at removing the side stand first, I think. Now these springs, side stand and main stand, are pretty powerful. 
where they've got to be treated with some care. Now, if you watch the stand move through its arc, it's under maximum pull now. If you watch here, as you get about halfway through, it's just about there, it seems to lose a bit of tension. And that's got to be the easiest point to get rid of it. So, keeping your face well out of the way. Okay. Good idea. In theory. Yeah, there we go. I didn't think it was going to go. Right. So now it's a simple nut and bolt job to get rid of the stand. So, moving on to the main stand. It too has a very hefty spring. Now, in theory, it should have a weaker point as well. But I think in this case it is just a theory. It doesn't seem to get much movement there at all. But I'll try about there. Again, this is very risky because uh, there's a lot of energy in these springs. In fact, let me just use a bit of cloth to try, just in case it does try and burst forth. Go on. There you go. Good stuff. I was slightly nervous about that because uh, you'll see when it comes to fitting them why I was nervous, but that is for a later day. Anyway, so again, now that's off, it's just a simple nut and bolt job, pull it free. So I'll undo these and bring you back and we'll spin the frame over and remove the last few bits and pieces. So really now there are only a few minor things left as the horn to undo, reflector, rubber bungs, seat bracket holder, and the frame is completely bare. I'm not going to show you me taking those off because really there's nothing to them. They are just simple nut and bolt jobs. And then I'll bring you back when the frame is completely bare so you know it's all done. Right, that's the frame completely stripped down. So now it needs the worst of the rubbish scraping off it first, then washing and then paint stripping to get it back to bare metal. So there's nothing left to undo, so that is that for the moment.